Hi, Tony here and welcome back to the Man Cave where this week I will be showing you how to fit an auxiliary USB power socket. Anybody that owns uh, one of the Triumph modern classic range of bikes will know that they have a USB charger available under the seat. Um, I'll have to check the bobber, obviously there isn't a space under the seat so I'm not sure that, that actually has one. But if you've got a street twin or a street cup or a T100, T120, you've got that USB charger. Now I've been using my iPhone in a, in a quad lock case on the handlebars. Really nice, uh, good way of connecting the phone and I'll put a link in the corner uh, to the video review I did of that. The one problem you have with that is after about an hour, hour and a half, you start running short on battery and a standard iPhone charging cable is not quite long enough to plug into the USB port and reach up to the handlebar. So I was looking for some kind of neat USB uh, extension if you like. In theory you could just get a USB extender cable, plug that in under the seat, uh, run the cable in neatly up under the tank, pop it up in the handlebars and have a cable hanging there, maybe zip tie it to the handlebars. Uh, but that's a, a little bit messy, I was looking for a better solution. So I started flicking around online and I've found on the Free Spirits website, it's if you've seen any of my videos you know I like the quality of their stuff and I've used some of their parts in the past. Uh, they offer a double USB plug which mounts onto the handlebar. So a very neat unit, rubber cap uh, to seal the rain out. It's got a double USB connector here and that just mounts onto the handlebar clamp. Uh, and then you've just got the wiring to run. It comes with the bracket, the bolts, instructions, everything you need. The only difficulty is in connecting this because there is an accessory connector uh, which in the stock bike is not used uh, underneath the tank uh, and you can actually fit some spade ends onto this and plug that into that uh, and away you go. Now the only problem with that is it's not very easy to get to and Free Spirits recommend that you take the tank off. I won't go through this in this video because that's quite long and I've already done that video so there'll be a link in the end credits and I'll put a link up here that will take you through to the X-Pipe video uh, which will show you uh, exactly how to take the tank off. It's not daunting at all, you don't have to worry about that. It is literally a pinch speed fit clip on the fuel supplier. Uh, you have two tabs that you pull to disconnect the cables. You can't get those the wrong way around because they're different sizes and then you've just got a rubber overflow high, uh, hose on the uh, near side uh, if you drive on the left, i.e. the proper side of the road. If you're in America and it's on your off side. Now for the purposes of this video, as I say, I've got the tank off already, uh, but that also means it's easier for me to show you how the wires route on here and it actually makes it easier to route the wires. You could possibly do it with the tank propped up because you can get to that accessory plug on the side but the routing of the wires is going to be a little bit more tricky. So for the extra five minutes, if that, that it takes to take the tank off, you might as well do that. You can do a much neater job of routing the wires down along the existing cables and uh, it will be, at the end, a much neater and, and prettier job. Okay, so with the tank off, uh, this is the area that we're going to be interested in. There's the fuel input. On these two tabs here, you have these two connectors which plug into the matching plugs uh, on the cables from the underside of the tank and then on this side you've just got a push fit rubber hose that goes onto the overflow but taking the tank off means that you can get to this which is the all important accessory plug it will be wrapped up in plastic to protect it to obviously stop water getting in there uh, but this is where you can plug that USB extender in. Now to fit this bracket it is a simple case of undoing these two bolts in the kit. You'll have replacement longer bolts and these uh, small aluminium spacers. So using a 6mm Allen key or wrench whichever you've got you can undo these two bolts. Next job is just to sit these little aluminium spacers in here and that's just to hold the bracket off of this hump on the arm here and then with the USB plug at the top just so that it's out of the way it's just then a case of putting the new bolts on and tightening those up. Now I'll do these to the correct torque setting uh, in a moment when I've done that but I'll put the torque setting on the screen here. Now I think that's a, a nice neat solution, very simple, it just puts this USB connector up out of the way. This uh, just screws in so if you want to, if you're being 
anal as I can be sometimes when you want those uh, USB connectors to line up straight you can just loosen those off like straighten them up and then tighten it up and you've got a nice watertight rubber bung that will sit on there to stop the rain getting into that it's then just a case of feeding these wires down and I'm going to run them so they run along the cables from the right hand controls uh, that's just going to be a bit fiddly getting them through uh, so in an effort to show you where how I've rooted this I've just pushed the sleeve up just to cover the bare wires I've run it down this gap here uh, and I've just included it in the little rubber tab that goes around the, uh, the, the stock factory cables. Once it's gone down through the bottom, I've fed it through the back here, zip tied it onto the main loom, uh, tucked it down out of the way behind this piece of plastic through under the frame rail here. Then it, it pops out here and then once this cable is through to here, that's the plug you've got to connect it to. I'm actually going to cut this cable short. It is very long. Uh, and generous but I'm going to cut that short so I haven't got masses of wire in. It's a case of taking the plastic wrap off of this so you can get to that. I've got to put two connectors on the end here once I've got rid of uh, the excess wire. That's just a case of crimping on some spades. They can push into there, cover that up uh, and, and that's it. That's uh, as much wiring as you need to do. So in the kit you get a little bag with the connectors on I've just crimped those onto the end of the cables. Uh, just for neatness, I've put a little bit of heat shrink on there just so that I can put that over the plugs. But it's then just a case, once you've taken the shrink wrap off of this accessory, accessory plug, is to plug these into that. Unfortunately, I didn't have a piece of heat shrink big enough to go over that plug. That would have been a really neat way to do that. Um, but, but what I'm going to do is plug these in, push that up as far as I can, heat shrink that on, and then just wrap a little bit of tape around that to protect it. And in terms of connecting it, if you look at the shape of the plug, the if you like the vertical plug takes the red cable and the horizontal plug takes the black. So they're plugged in, pull that up so that it's flush or maybe just over the top just so that I can seal that off and then I'll put some tape around, tuck that away, we can put it all back together see if it works. So as you can see all I've done is just put a little bit of electrical tape, I've used white so I can see that for future reference but obviously you can't see it once the tank goes back on and that should be enough just to keep the water out of that. You can see in the plugs that it was well greased in away from the factory. As they say the proof is in the pudding, there's the iPhone, switch the ignition on and we've got, actually we've got a little bit of a blue light on the plug there, if I plug that in, boom, there we go the phone is charging. There's an obvious big advantage to using this accessory plug that is sitting under there is that you don't have to cut and splice into any of the stock wiring loom. Now I'm not a big fan of messing around too much with any of the wiring. If you can plug extra bits in fine but if you've got to start cutting uh, uh, factory looms then uh, that's not something that I'm really that keen to do on a bike that I've just spent a fair amount of money on. So that means this option is great. It doesn't void any warranties. You're just plugging that in there but it does mean that you You've got a constant supply to this now that's not really going to draw any major current until you plug a device into it as I said there is a small LED light in the plug itself but LEDs draw virtually uh, I say virtually no they draw some power but they draw such a small amount of power that uh, I can't imagine that that's going to be uh, any issue Arguably, if you're the sort of person that lays your bike up for the winter, um, could that be on constantly? Although it's drawing just a, a small, tiny current, could that affect your battery? I don't know. But if you're doing it properly and you're laying your bike up for the winter, you would have disconnected the battery and had the battery on a trickle charger anyway. So there you go, another very nicely engineered, easy to fit part from Free Spirits. I think it looks nice on here. It's not, uh, it doesn't take away from the aesthetics of the bike. It's not too big and lumpy. It is obviously a little bit more involved to take the tank off, but by doing so, I've been able to run that cable much neater uh, and it almost looks like a, a factory installation. I'm really pleased with it. It's a utilitarian part, um, but it looks nice and it doesn't detract from the overall aesthetics of the handlebars of the bike too much. Um, as usual, I'll put some links in the corner and there'll be some links in the end credits for you to go away and have a look at these parts and other videos that I've done. Um, and there'll be a subscribe button. There's a little Man Cave logo in the bottom there. You can click on that at any point. There's a subscribe button in the end credits. I'd love you to subscribe if you like what I'm doing here. And all that leaves me to say is thanks for watching. And until next time, take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.